In this video, we'll continue to work on our login screen. So there's a number of things that we need to fix. But first of all, let's have a look at the existing user interface that we have. This window that we see uh, when it load, when the program loads up is based on a specific window size that's actually set down here in the my window that set size in the main method of our program. So initially it's set to 500 pixels in width by 200 pixels in height and that's what we see currently here on the screen. Of course the user can move this window around and resize it and using the flow layout all of the components on the window will shift around based on the current size of the window. So we'd like to fix that. Maybe position the components in some kind of fixed location would be better rather than have them move around all the time. Of course, we could stop the, the user from resizing the window. That would also be an option. One or two other little problems here is that you'll notice the name J text field. That's okay because we can enter in a name. But the password field, that's in plain text. We shouldn't really display the password. We should have the password hidden in a proper password entry field so we can fix that and obviously because this is just a, a login dialog or a login screen that mimics a login process we need to have some way of validating the user so we'll set up a kind of dummy username and password to check the entry against in order to show whether the user was successful in logging in or unsuccessful so let's quit the application and make some changes to our code. Okay, so the first change that we're going to make is we're going to go and find the password field. So at the moment that is private J text field txt password. I'm going to change that instead of it being a J text field, we're going to change that to a J password field. So this is very similar to a JTEX field except that it is a special example or a special case of JTEX field that is a password entry field and by default it will just show the dots rather than the text that the user is entering into the text field. So I've changed this here where I declare txt password I should also change it where I'm creating that text field. So down here I have txt password equals new j text field. So let's change it here also to j password field. Okay. The other thing that I want to do is I want to add in a dummy username and password uh, just so that I can validate the user entry. I have no system that I can check or no database of users that I can check at the moment so I'm just going to set up um, some strings and set them equal to some username and password that I can check against. So I'm going to say private string s username equals and let's call it this username equals and for the moment I'm gonna set that equal to Joe blogs and I'm gonna do the same for some kind of password that I can just check against and I'm gonna set the password equal to Java Okay, the next small change that I'm going to make to the code is down where we set our layout. So in our create login method, we have c.setLayout equal to new flow layout. And I'm going to change the flow layout. So instead of being a flow layout, I'm going to change the flow layout to grid layout. Now the grid layout 
allows me to specify the number of rows and columns that it's going to have. So we need four rows by two columns. So if I just save what I have at the moment and compile and then I'm going to run it and what you'll see is the user interface looks a little bit different. We now have the name and password clearly positioned on the left hand side and the text box for name and password on the right hand side followed by the checkbox followed by the submit button and the space over here is actually for our label our message label which is blank at the moment so we don't see anything and then our lock icon is um, visible underneath the submit button so I can type into the username field and when I type into the password field you'll see that instead of seeing the characters I see a whole series of dots rather than being able to see the plain text password. Now when I resize this window you'll see that because it's using a grid layout what happens is the components don't change position in relation to one another however the grid layout is still trying to fill all of the window. So as I resize the window each cell on the grid still wants to take up as much space as it possibly can. And this doesn't really look nice. We'd like to kind of fix this in place and not allow the user to resize the window. So there's a way we can do this and it just means that we have to add a single line of code to the constructor for our window just to be able to stop the user resizing it. So let's see how we can do that. So in order to stop the user from resizing the window all we have to do is go to the constructor for our JFrame and we're going to add a single line of code into this so just before I create the user interface I'm going to stop the user from resizing the window and all I have to do is say set resizable false and that will stop the user from being able to resize the window. So we compile and run. And we get our window. And now when we hover the mouse over and try and resize the window, we can no longer resize it. So the window stays at that fixed size and the components do not move around because I can't resize the window. So now we've, at least we've got some kind of fixed layout that isn't going to change. Okay, so we have added in the password field We've changed that text field to a password field. We have added in just some username and password to validate against to make sure everything is working. And we've changed the layout to a grid layout. And of course we've stopped the user from resizing the window. So this makes our user interface a little bit better, a little bit more consistent and keeps things in the right place.